So welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on this webinar. Uh, the topic today is how to reverse aging naturally. If you didn't know about the Beauty Doctrine, it is a company that I founded about three years ago during the pandemic to help uh, consumers uh, navigate the complicated world of beauty. Uh, so I am a true believer in the fact that beauty begins with health, period. Um, and I've garnered this uh, throughout my years of experience, you know, having spent 28 years now in the beauty industry and just having a passion for nutrition and health and wellness. And I was able to see uh, visible changes on those that actually combine a good lifestyle with good skincare. And we'll, we'll delve a bit deeper into that. But something that has really become mainstream in the last few years is this understanding that we need external interventions for us to have beautiful skin and there is nothing further from the truth. Uh, you can totally have incredible skin just with very simple methods and that's what we're going to be talking about is really going into the basics, those foundational elements that can give you great skin. Here, there are a few things that have shaped my views um, you know, on beauty, which are quite unique. I think I'm the first person in the beauty industry to really talk about all of these connections, um, you know, connecting inner beauty with outer beauty, with lifestyle, and also compatibility compatibility of ingredients, um, you know, with skin. So um, uh, let's just delve a little bit into my background here. And so, uh, like I said, I have been in the beauty industry now for 28 years. I'm turning 47 next week in just a few days. And I've been in beauty now since I was 18, 19. My very first brand that I worked for was Guerlain. And that was back home in Morocco. I moved here from Morocco at age 21 and then just got into beauty, of course. And once I got here, I was a makeup artist early in my career. Um, so worked for a lot of different brands. And then I was a market trainer and I worked my way up into corporate America. And then I started working for some global brands as well in various capacities. And so that experience allowed me to interface with thousands of consumers. And so I was able to see really close when you're doing makeup on someone or applying skincare or even a facial, you get to see skin really close. You get to ask questions, you get to understand you know, their habits, what, you know, what skincare they're using, why their skincare is changing. So I've had clients over years and years and years and really followed, you know, their progression. And so I developed this really keen eye for skin and really being able to identify a lot of skin issues just from having like a quick conversation with sometimes just a glance at someone's skin. I'm like, hmm, that, you know, they probably exfoliate every day or they're having these premature wrinkles because, you know, they could be applying these methods and so on and so forth. So I've gotten really lucky to be able to interface with, you know, thousands of consumers. And that's what really got me here today. One thing I have to mention out of all the brands that I uh, worked for, Dr. Pericone, uh, if you're not familiar with him. He's a leader in my book. He is incredible. He had a huge impact on me. I worked for him way, way early in my career. And I was a market trainer and he was writing a bunch of books. And so, of course, I digested every single one of his books. I learned a lot of his methods. And he's really the one that drew that connection for me be between the inner and the outer. And so, you know, outer beauty, so what you see on the outside has so, so much to do with what you put in your body. I even remember there was this diet in one of his books where he um, he called it the three-day facelift. And I mean, of course, you know, you would think that that's impossible, but it is possible to a certain, um, you know, extent. And it was a, a diet. If you just follow this diet for three days, you should see a visible improvement obviously not the facelift that we all know, but you see a, a marked um, improvement in the skin. Uh, so that's one experience that really, really left um, a huge impact on me and kind of governed how I started seeing beauty from there on. Um, so working for a lot of skincare brands and beauty brands, that was always on the back of my mind is, you know, I see all these clients that spend thousands of dollars sometimes every single month. 
and their skin is not improving because they're not paying attention to their diet. And so as soon as I decided to have my own voice, you know, not be a brand representative and kind of represent my views, that's one thing that I really wanted to emphasize is that connection that I credit to Dr. Faircon to have instilled in me. Um, and so the aside from my background, the other thing that really shaped my views on beauty is my skincare struggle and also my background. So growing up in Morocco, I grew up, you know, watching my mom and my aunt and all these women in my life have phenomenal skin. Uh, to this day, my mom doesn't have any wrinkles on her face. And she doesn't even know what a retinoid is or a chemical peel. She doesn't get Botox fillers, none of this stuff. And so kind of seeing that really uh, that big, big difference between the women back home and then the, my, a lot of my clients here and, and my clients that I have here in the U.S. are the ones that truly spend so much money in all these interventions. Uh, so I was able to see that and always kind of, you know, kind of try to figure out why there is that big difference in, you know, skin uh, with people that use lots of skincare. I'm not saying skincare is bad. I'm a skincare fanatic and a skincare expert, a double certified skincare expert, but um, really kind of driving the understanding on the impact of diet and lifestyle. Obviously back home, uh, you know, lifestyle is huge. You know, people don't smoke, at least women, they don't smoke. Um, you know, they don't drink alcohol or, or adopt all those habits, you know, spend too much time in the sun, and those really, you know, they avoid those things that really have a, a, a negative impact on the skin. Um, and then, of course, my skin struggle started at 26 years old. I used to work for this big brand. I won't mention the name, but, you know, we had $2,000 moisturizers that were based on caviar and gold serums and things like that. And one morning I just woke up with my eyes swollen shut. I developed perioral dermatitis, lots of sensitivity. I'm still allergic to a lot of ingredients. I can't wear eye makeup. So I've struggled and, and being, you know, basically the face of the brand, you know, you have to have your skin looking amazing. So I'm very thankful for that experience because I think if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't really know everything that I know today about skincare because that's really where my curiosity about ingredients started. And that's, you know, on my hunt on, uh, you know, or for my hunt for uh, ingredients that are compatible with my own skin that can help heal all those issues that I had developed just overnight out of a sudden. Um, and so, of course, I went to my dermatologist and he had recommended a long term course of antibiotics and other interventions that I just wasn't willing to uh, take on because I, at least at the time, I knew that antibiotics can be really destructive for your gut microbiome and I wasn't willing to sacrifice health for beauty. And so that's when I started kind of testing a bunch of different things and trying to heal my skin on my own. And thankfully I've been successful in doing so. Um, and so that's basically what really brought me here. Those are the two major contributors to that shaped my, uh, my views today. So this is, uh, you know, just a little bit of um, kind of sharing a bit of my ex-life in, in the, the corporate world and beauty. I call it, this is the bragging page. Um, so I, you know, traveled quite a bit, actually, uh, doing a ton of different trainings. You know, I've been to pretty much every state except for three, <laughs> three states in, in, in America that I haven't been to and traveled internationally, worked like I said, led a lot of big teams. So here I was executive director for Hourglass. This was my team. I remember we were at Sephora here hosting an event. Um, I'm not sure if you recognize him. That is Dr. David Sinclair. He is the leading researcher out of Harvard. He's a professor at Harvard University. He's also, he has a lab at Harvard. Um, he has amazing books and podcasts and all types of things. And uh, at the time, I worked for a brand that used this ingredient that he was researching. It was resveratrol, and it was throughout a lot of our formulations. So this was a conference that we had organized with him uh, in Paris. Uh, so a lot of what I did also is, you know, being an onstage speaker. I used to be a regular speaker on, you know, at fall and spring trend shows in front of thousands of, of um, consumers. And one of my latest projects, this actually was just last year, 
2023, I wrote the educational curriculum for Scarlett Johansson's brand. And so by that, I mean, you know, like if you go to Sephora stores, so all Sephora stores in the US uh, that have her brand, the training that they get, you know, they call it backstage, the training that they get uh, for the outset is written by me. So I would do kind of go through all of the products and ingredients and create those functions and and all of that, um, all the information about the specific products and their functions and so on and so forth. And so that's just kind of a little bit of a peek into my background before I decided to get into, you know, to, to create my own brand, basically. And the way that I came about, uh, I remember the last brand that I worked for, I had launched them in Sephora Canada and I launched them at Credo. And I'm a huge fan of Credo. It's the first and the leading retailer in clean beauty. And I, I remember being in San Francisco on a trip training their team. And I had forgotten my, you know, uh, I think moisturizer, forgot some of my skincare. And so I was in store looking for products that are suitable for my skin. Obviously, I have all these skin issues. And so looking around, it was really difficult for me to find something that works for me. And it just didn't make sense. Here I am in the beauty industry, having worked for all these brands. I'm standing in the cleanest beauty retailer in the U.S. And it's hard for me to find a product that would work for my skin because I didn't bring my special concoction, this, uh, you know, oil that I would use. Um, and so that kind of just, you know, I said, that, that's not right. This needs to change. And there are a lot of people that are in my shoes that have sensitive skin and they're, you know, in their 40s and beyond, and they still want access to peptides and all these incredible products. And yet they can't access them because they're reactive. And so this really was the moment where I decided, I said, okay, you know, uh, that I, I guess along with some, some, you know, other things that happened with my, um, X brand that I worked for, I decided to launch the beauty doctrine during the pandemic. And so I'm so glad I've, I've done that. And so at the beauty doctrine, I'm free to, you know, kind of share my views with the world. And one thing that I coined is the functional beauty principles. Um, and so this is really based on functional medicine, because I am a fan of health and wellness and anything to do with holistic and integrative, you know, approaches to taking care of your body from the inside out and kind of treating the root cause rather than just the symptoms. So for those of you that don't know functional medicine or they're not familiar with it, so it's very different than Western medicine. Obviously, there is a place for Western medicine, but functional medicine kind of just digs a little bit deeper. So instead of, let's say you have a headache, uh, you don't just reach for ibuprofen, you try and figure out why you have the headache in the first place and you treat that root cause. So maybe you're just dehydrated. Um, and so the same approach I've been trying to um, kind of apply in beauty and thankfully it's been really successful. It's worked for so many of my clients and of course for myself as well. Um, a few other things that I incorporate into this philosophy of functional beauty is epigenetics. So epigenetics, the word epi is beyond and then genetics. And so one thing that a lot of us have you know, kind of believed for so many years is that, you know, you're stuck with your genes. So there are so many things that, you know, people, and I used to hear this a lot. They're like, oh yeah, you just have good skin. It must be your genes. And that's not true. Actually, uh, Boston University, I believe a year or two ago, they, um, you know, advertised this study or published a study about uh, the impact or the percentage of the impact of our genes on um, kind of the manifestation of disease, let's say. And they found that on average, 20 to 30% max is really the impact of our genes. You know, and a lot of us thought it's much higher than that. It's 90, you know, 100%, some people believe. Uh, and what this means also, this is really, uh, it's amazing, right? Because it gives us power. So we're not totally powerless. If, if, you know, my genes are passed down to me, I, you know, it is what it is, that's what's going to happen. No, that's not true. Actually, now you can turn on or turn off certain genes. So if you have a genetic predisposition to a certain disease, you can actually with your diet and lifestyle, uh, and there are, of course, a lot of biohacks now that you can do to really keep those genes dormant. And you can also speed them up, you can speed the manifestation of negative outcomes, 
when you are adopting really bad habits. So you have a lot more control than you think. And that kind of is linked up with nutrigenomics. So it's another thing that I'm, I'm you know, obsessed with is nutri is nutrition, genomics that has to do with genes. So it's really that direct correlation between what you put in your body and how your genes behave. Um, and then the last, not the last thing, but the next thing is ingredient compatibility, which I alluded to before. This is huge. I don't think anybody has looked into this, you know, in the beauty industry. Um, and it's, it's just a big, really important topic that has been neglected um, often. And I can tell you from having worked with multiple brands, you know, um, during my career is there is the you know, focus on the sensorial. And I see this very often. I hand a moisturizer to, you know, a consumer and the first thing they do, they open it and smell it. So we're all programmed into thinking, you know, your skincare should be this like beautiful sensorial experience that smells amazing and feels amazing. And so that's really been the focus is making great formulas that are really appealing and pleasant versus formulas that actually are compatible with skin. You know, let's not forget that skin is an organ. Uh, you want to treat it the same way you would treat your heart and liver. Your heart or liver don't care if something smells good. They, they need their nutrients. They need their hydration. They need all these basic foundational things to make them thrive. And that's the same thing with our skin. It is an organ that needs very, very specific you know, ingredients to thrive. So everything else that's a trend and all these things that we see on social media, they're just marketing for the most part. Um, and so the next point here is strengthening the barrier layer. Um, so there's actually, I'm so happy to see that, that some brands now are starting to pay attention to this uh, for many years, like the pretty much throughout my entire career, the focus was just strip away that skin. So for many years, it was really, you know, trendy, I guess, to use everything oil-free. So people were scared of, of moisturizers. Um, you know, they thought oil would, would age them or would, uh, you know, cause acne and things like that, which is the total opposite. You know, the more you eliminate that oil from your, your skin or your routine, the more susceptible your skin is to aging and dehydration and the compromised barrier layer. And so I want you to think of your skin as having this invisible layer of fat. It's made up of fat, a bunch of different types of fats, including cholesterol. Um, and what that does, it really serves as your invisible defender against the environment uh, and aggressors, even aggressive skincare and so on and so forth. Um, and so we need to strengthen and preserve that layer, not to strip it away as we've been taught by many brands and many trends in skincare, and it's still very common. I see this. I cringe a lot of times when I'm scrolling through social media and I see a lot of these, you know, dermatologists and estheticians and, and influencers really pushing for exfoliation as really the solution to everything, right? And so if you have a, an age spot, exfoliate it away. If you have a wrinkle, why don't you do a peel? If you have hyperpigmentation, same thing. Um, acne, all of it, everything is kind of, a, you know, um, related to some exfoliating agent. So everything kind of is being or not. Um, so every single problem uh, has a solution that includes an exfoliating agent. There it is. <laughs> I was able to form that sentence. Now, next is really getting the foundation right, which I already alluded to. It's really looking at the essentials. So essential actives. So those, those are your water, your oil, um, your hyaluronic acid, uh, your niacinamide, just the very, very basic things that will help your skin thrive, um, not paying attention to trends. So I'm really hoping for the day where, you know, skincare companies stop going after trendy ingredients. So you see all the snail mucin and all types of things on social media, and they're completely useless for the skin. Um, and so trends should be left to fashion and maybe makeup, but skincare it should be treated as that one essential thing that takes care of your skin. All right, that was a mouthful. <laughs> now, I know that this webinar is about uh, age correction and reversing wrinkles, but you can't really reverse if you don't prevent. Um, and so, and I see this very often also in our mindset where a lot of people are after the peptides and of course, you know, Botox and fillers and all these 
intervention, all these things that are supposed to fix, right? So we think, okay, it's okay to break down the skin. It's okay to be careless, you know, with lifestyle habits. Um, and then there is something that's external that's going to fix it for me. Well, I hate to break it to you. That is not possible. You cannot improve the skin in any way if you are uh, kind of degrading it at the same time. So if, if you're uh, adopting a lifestyle that's not nurturing the skin, you can be spending all types of money. You can get in, be getting all the treatments, all the lasers, and you're not going to see the improvement that you want to see if you're not targeting these very basics. So I tried to keep them just three and three. Of course, there are, there's a lot more, but with skincare, the three big things that really truly um, that are going to help you prevent uh, premature aging specifically is an, a tinted non-nano zinc sunscreen. So if you just start there, you're ahead of 99% of the population in their skincare choices uh, and for so many reasons. Just the fact that the sunscreen is tinted, that means it's protecting you from blue light. Um, non-nano, it means it's a big molecule. It can't absorb into the body or the skin, that means it can actually sit on the surface and do its job in blocking that sun. Zinc is the only mineral ingredient that's going to give you both broad, you know, um, UVA and UVB. So that's broad spectrum protection. And so sunscreen, I would say in the skincare battle, not talking lifestyle, but in skincare, it's really about 90% of the battle. If you get your skincare right, I mean, your sunscreen right, you're ahead. Uh, so the second thing is um, bone broth and marine collagen. Those, I put them in their skincare. You just got to consume those. Why? Because that's pure collagen. Uh, so it's giving you body, just by consuming collagen, you're creating, you're sending those signals to your body to create more of it. And obviously that's a complicated thing because with anything, there is the good and the bad, right? So not all collagen is good. You know, a lot of my lives, I break all of this down and I'll be able to break this down further in future webinars. I have courses that break all of this as well. Gonna help you select the very, very best collagen powders. I have a good curation on my website as well that you can reference. But, you know, if you make bone broth and marine collagen part of your daily intake, Again, you're ahead of a lot of people, especially if you get the right type that's compatible with your body, that's bioavailable, that you're able to absorb, and it's also toxin-free. So that's a huge part. Um, so next is protecting your barrier layer. So you need the right moisturizer and the right antioxidants, and we'll get a little bit deeper in that. Um, all right, lifestyle. So we want to reduce sugar and carbs. Why is that? Because sugar causes this... Um, process is called glycation. So glycation is related to glucose. So that's glucose that's attaching to your collagen and elastin fibers. So again, you could be doing everything right. You could be doing your sunscreen and taking your collagen and really doing it all um, and spending all those th thousands of dollars on interventions. But if you have a diet that's very high in sugar, you're breaking, you're literally breaking down all of that elastin and collagen from the inside out. Nothing will help you if you are consuming a diet that's high in sugar. So that's got to go or at least be reduced. And carbs is part of that because carbs, they're understood, they're received by your body as sugar. Your, your, your body doesn't know, you know, that it's, you know, sugar from a potato, right? So obviously with the potato, you're getting, you know, uh, minerals and you're getting vitamins, but there is still that level of sugar you know, that the carbs will turn into sugar unless you're you're um, burning them off. But of course, the amount that you're consuming in one sitting, you know, makes a big difference as well. So we want to reduce those as much as possible. Uh, reducing smoking and alcohol. Smoking goes without saying. Uh, and alcohol too, I get a lot of pushback on that one. Uh, smoking basically... Um, reduces or eliminates all of your vitamin C uh, reserves. And so vitamin C is essential to creating that collagen in the skin. Obviously it's essential to our immunity, uh, but if we're staying just with the skin, you got to either stop or reduce smoking, or at least if for some reason, you know, it's something you don't wanna forego, increase those vitamin C levels to be able to support your skin. Um, alcohol, there's no good amount, no safe amount. It's just one of those things. It is going to dehydrate the skin. It's also going to contribute to that glycation. Um, there's so much marketing around red wine being healthy. That's just, yes, it 
can have some, uh, you know, resveratrol, uh, some antioxidants, but the fact that it has alcohol, that's going to speed up aging. So obviously, again, quantities matter, frequency matters. So the less, the better. Um, and next is the increase in nutrient intake. Nutrients are going to be what really, they're your defenders, really. So we got to give the body that, I call them the army, you know, those antioxidants, they're going to help you fight off oxidation. So oxidation is what causes free radical damage in our bodies and skin and that deterioration. It's like a cascade effect. Um, and so that speeds up the aging process. So uh, you want to have enough nutrients in your body through diet supplementation to help defend your body from those uh, free radicals. And then sleep, sleep is huge. I keep finding out because that's a huge struggle for me. Uh, and I see a difference from one day to the other. Uh, so days that I sleep well, my skin is glowing. If I don't sleep well, it's right there, it's immediate. Your skin is this amazing thing that gives you instant feedback. And so that feedback a lot of times shows up as acne or dullness or puffiness all those things. So when you see um, any types of man type of manifestation on the skin, you want to think, try to draw that connection. What is it that could be causing me this puffiness versus trying, you know, go and get something external. Let's think about what's actually triggering that reaction. Movement is huge. Uh, so movement is our body's way of detoxifying. Obviously, we all know the benefits of exercise, but, you know, relative to skin. And so I get clients that say I have back acne or, you know, uh, even like, um, you know, ingrown hairs. There are so many different uh, issues that happen to the skin where it's holding on to a lot of toxins. When you're moving, when you're sweating, you are getting rid of toxins. So just think of like toxins in, toxins out. We have, you know, and we're, 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 um, you know, exposed to toxins, we're breathing them in the air, we're breathing all these heavy metals, we have pollution that we're dealing with. And then of course, we're, you know, slathering all the skincare that's toxin filled. Um, so a lot of times, we have to optimize our detoxification pathways, in order to get rid of that excess. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there and cause problems. So again, we can be doing, you know, we're making a lot of progress with trying to age reverse and trying to reduce those wrinkles. But if there's a lot of buildup of those toxins in the body, the job is really, really hard. So you have a lot of room to make up for in order to start making progress. So these are your very basic, you know, preventative measures, and then we'll get into reversal. And so actually, I was able to reverse aging myself. I remember uh, I visited, you know, I went back to Morocco for a visit and my sister looked at me. She's like, what happened to you? You look so old. And I didn't even realize that it was a really, you know, tough, you know, time in my life. You know, I had a lot of stress. And that, of course, as I was saying, it manifested in my skin. So, you know, was developing deep wrinkles around the eyes. I had a lot of sagging in the neck. Um, and so, and I was able, and I, the reason I had this is I took this screenshot from one of my walks because it really details my journey when I had that wake up call, <laughs> I never even, I didn't pay attention to it. And then I started looking, I'm like, oh my God, I really need to do something about this. And that's when I really kind of, instead of kind of my research tra trajectory changed. So I was always really curious about um, how to appease the sensitivity, how to manage perioral dermatitis, all those issues that I had in the past, which I was you know, successful in doing so, thankfully. And now in my 40s, I was in my early 40s and starting to deal with these um, other issues, which are loss of elasticity that was really aggravated uh, or triggered by stress. It was directly correlated to stress and lack of sleep. And so, you know, I started researching, you know, how to reverse that. And a lot of what I did, and this was actually documented like from September to December. So just a few months, it was pretty quick. Um, I was able to reverse that, like, you know, the sagging in the neck, you know, was gone, it went away. And these are the strategies that I employed. They're very simple. They didn't take too long. Um, so I became pretty much the first person, I think, on TikTok to talk about red light therapy. Now there are 
thousands um, or maybe hundreds of thousands of videos on red light. Everybody's talking about it. And so I researched it, researched it really, really deep. And what I did was just, I got a device at the time. It was just a small little device. I didn't invest in the big panel and started using that just on the neck because that was my biggest problem area. Obviously, I upgraded after that to big, to multiple um you know, uh, devices, once I saw, you know, the results, I got really excited about red light. Uh, but that's phenomenal. Red light was actually discovered by NASA. Uh, and it was being used in space to grow plants, uh, because every plant, just like us humans, every living thing needs energy, you know, you need the, the sun, you know, the plants need that sun to to um, to grow. And so they were using these red light lamps to help those lamps to help those plants grow. And so the astronauts really noticed that their you know, joint pain was diminished. And so that kind of, that triggered this curiosity about, about red light. And then, you know, fast forward years later, there were lots and lots of, you know, research, you know, studies that, that were done on red light and it was found to do a multitude of benefits it's being used in, you know, as a phenomenal, mo phenomenal modality in the treatment, even um, helping cancer patients, you know, through chemotherapy, it helps, you know, heal inflammation, it helps with muscle soreness. But if we're keeping it just to beauty, it's going to help stimulate hair growth, and it also helps with cellular energy. Um, and so hence your skin starts behaving younger again, because you're infusing it with, with um, mitochondrial energy. Mitochondria are the energy factories of our skin. So the more, the slower the mitochondria is, the more sluggish it is, the faster we age because it, you know, our body function is not optimal. And so when you are exposing your body to red light therapy every, well, almost every day, you don't need to do it seven days a week. I think from all my research, Really, the sweet spot is about, I call it the five five. It's really five days a week, five minutes a day. So it's five minutes if you do a panel, if you're doing one of those masks that you wear close to the skin, because there's a big difference if you're wearing it uh, in a way that is touching your skin. Generally, those the light is much weaker because obviously we don't want it to, to burn the skin. And so you need longer period you know, a longer treatment time. Um, so general rule of thumb, if you use in a red light therapy device, obviously get a really high quality one that's non-thermal because heat on the skin can age it and it can also create um, dysfunction in our melanocytes leading to hyperpigmentation. So you want to make sure your device never heats up ever, especially if you if it's touching your skin. Um, but using, you know, a wearable mask, uh, you would need 10 to 20 minutes a day, about five days a week. But if you're using a panel like the Conjo one, which I put on my website, uh, that one, you need five minutes a day and you're done. Uh, and it's best done in the morning as well um, because it acts like the sun without the UV damage. So basically a lot of us are cooped up indoors most days, especially if you work from home like myself. If you don't get a chance to step outside and look at the direct sunlight, which is phenomenal for us, it helps reset our circadian rhythm. It helps with our mood regulation and all of that. So if you don't have access to that first thing in the morning, do your red light therapy session in the morning, it's going to replace the sun. It's going to, like I said, it's going to be that sun without the UV. Um, so that's the additional benefit of doing it in the morning. It also strengthens your skin's defenses against the sun. So if you were, let's say, to go to the beach, do your um, treatment in the morning, your skin will be more resilient throughout the day. So red light therapy is one of those things that are phenomenal. Nothing wrong with doing it at night. But I just find that in the morning, you get a lot more benefits. Um, okay, so next is prioritizing hydration and moisture. This is as basic as it gets, and still a lot of people don't do it right. So by not doing it right, uh, I mean maybe using a moisturizer, like you know Vaseline-type moisturizers or even creme de la mer, any of those moisturizers that um, use uh, mineral oils, things that are petrolatum derived. So petrolatum is petroleum jelly, that's crude oil, basically, even if it's refined, there's still residual, you know, toxins in there, we don't want anything like that on the skin. And the, the, the thing to keep in mind with skin is, let's say, if you consume a toxin, 
versus put it on the skin. When you consume it, we are equipped. Our bodies have, you know, the liver and the kidneys. We have these filtration systems. So you can actually, if you're drinking enough water, you may be having your greens, if you're kind of helping that system, you can actually excrete, you can get rid of those toxins that you're ingesting. But when you get the toxins through the skin, you don't have a digestive system. You don't have a filtration system in your skin. So a lot of those toxins get through right to the bloodstream. And so that's why using cleaner ingredients is so, so important. Um, and so, and then formulations that are light. Uh, those who know me, and I'm sure a lot of you that have joined, um, you know, have been my clients, my, uh, you know, very dear clients for a long time. Um, you know that I, I don't even use moisturizer. I love serums. Serums can be used so much more potent and they're also much lighter. So they penetrate into the skin much deeper and you can actually layer without having that peeling or any issue. You. I'll get into the method, the beauty doctrine method of application a little bit later, but just this is an overview on, you know, the kind of the hydration and moisture part prioritization. And uh, my preference is always, always through serums rather than moisturizers, um, including ceramides. Ceramides are the building blocks of our lipid barrier. So again, it's that invisible layer that protects our skin and it's made up of ceramides. So you always wanna be looking for oils that are high in ceramides. One, the first one that always comes to mind is jojoba oil. It's comprised of at least 94% ceramides. So that, that's huge. It's the most compatible oil with our skin. And that's the one that's, that's found in Barrier Repair Serum, which is the product that really has saved my skin over the years. Um, and then of course, hydration will help prevent moisture loss. Just know, like, especially at night when you're sleeping, your skin is clean, you're losing a lot of water. Um, and so water loss leads to wrinkles. It's that, you know, basic. Uh, so people that don't moisturize, uh, sufficiently or accurately and adequately, they tend to age the fastest. So you have to strike that balance between having enough water, enough oil, and also lighter formulas that go deep. And then you finish off with that heavy formula that can seal that moisture into the skin overnight to prevent that water loss. So that is the TBD. So TBD is just the beauty doctrine. So that's my method. So the method is always starting with a gentle cleanse. And I, I see a lot of dermatologists saying, oh, you don't need to cleanse in the morning. And maybe they're thinking you don't need a harsh cleanser in the morning, but you absolutely need a cleanser. When you're, you know, you sleep overnight, your body pushes out toxins to the surface. Hopefully you actually have good skincare on. So, you know, that skincare is going to attach and attract, you know, dust from the environment impurities and then of course all that the the stuff that you're pushing out all the toxins and so you gotta you know remove that water is not going to be enough and water does not remove oils so people that actually are applying their skincare right so they're using an occlusive at night that's trapping the moisture in that occlusive is going to be you know a little bit sticky uh, so you got to have some type of cleanser but it's just a matter of finding a gentle cleanser that's going to remove everything properly without dehydrating or drying the skin. And so in the morning, you always want the one cleanse at night, a double cleanse is very important because during the day we have so much more on the skin and by so much more, I'm not even going as far as talking about makeup. You know, there are a lot of people who layer, they have, you know, primer, foundation, concealer, bronzer, and so on. I'm not even talking about that. So even just people like myself who just wear sunscreen, maybe a little bit of blush, you still need to double double cleanse because your skin is, you know, absorbing lots of toxins throughout the day. And again, that texture, that the, the moisturizer and the sunscreen, and especially sunscreens, they tend to, a lot of them tend to be water resistant. Um, you're going to need that extra help. You need an oil-based cleanser first, and then you follow the gentle cleanser that's suitable for your skin. And so, uh, you know, if you're normal to dry, you'd want to use a cream cleanser. If you're on the oily side or combination, you can do a foaming cleanser that's sulfate free. Uh, so next is a blend of a mineral mist with hyaluronic acid. That's just a must. Hyaluronic acid is a humectant. And so humectant is an ingredient that draws water into the skin. And if we continue, you know, if we draw that water into the skin throughout the day, what happens, and you don't need to be applying all day. If you apply a good one, it's just going to do its job all day long. Um, so uh, 
apply something with hyaluronic acid and then mist in it with a mineral mist. So it's going to draw that mist and those minerals into the cell and it's going to stay nice and plump. You actually, very often you see a plumping effect just within 30 minutes if you're using the right products that are actually absorbing into the skin and doing their job. Um, and so that water kind of step has to always be first, then followed by oil. Um, so then you would do an oil-based serum without essential oils. So it's really important to distinguish, to kind of make that distinction between plant oils and essential oils. So plant oils, I think, are squeezed out of the plant or pressed. So like olive oil is a plant oil, jojoba oil, almond oil. But then you have the ones that are distilled. Uh, so the essential oils would be the ones that you find in little bottles. They are very often used, you know, in aromatherapy, and that's how they should be used. They also have medicinal properties. And there is this confusion very often in beauty when you see lavender, for example. If I was to talk about lavender, you know, the first thing that comes to mind, and I'm sure you, you can let me know in the chat, uh, feel free to, to be using the chat. Um, the first thing that comes to mind you know, with lavender is that it's soothing and calming. And that's true, but from an aromatherapy perspective. Now, if we take that lavender and it's an essential oil and we apply it on the skin, now it's actually aggressive. It's going to weaken that lipid barrier and it can cause sensitivity. And it can actually, lavender has a lot of, it's um, an estrogenic, uh, you know, plant. So it can really mess with hormones, especially for males. And so, you know, nobody really looks at all these different nuances. And many people who start skincare brands, they're like, oh, okay, you know, Google, what's soothing? Lavender comes up. Okay, we're going to put it into our formula. And it's really not that simple. So it's very important to draw the line between our therapy. Uh, topical skincare, and of course, what we ingest. And so there is this saying, I think I put it somewhere in the presentation later on, where people think if it's good enough to eat, it's good enough to apply on the skin. That is not true at all. So again, very important to make all of those distinctions. You know, different ingredients behave very differently depending on how they are used. Um, all right, so next in the TBD method is the a mineral sunscreen, which I've talked about before. So this is the most basic routine for every day. So gentle cleansing, some type of water-based serum uh, with hyaluronic acid, some type of oil-based serum and mineral. So if you just do these four things, you are you know, off on the right track. Now, once a week, you want to exfoliate with something really gentle. Obviously, there are so many types of exfoliants. There are enzymes and glycolic is really important and, and, and very um, popular is the better word. <laughs> um, but that can be really problematic for melanated skin, uh, sensitive skin. And so a lot of times in the marketplace, we, you know, many people look for the most powerful. I hear that all the time. Okay, what is the strongest? What's the most powerful? Your skin is delicate. We, you don't want the most powerful thing for your skin. Um, you want things that will get the job done without causing sensitivity. And lactic acid happens to be one of my favorites. It's typically mandelic and lactic, but I do prefer lactic because it's naturally found in our bodies and it has moisturization properties. So in the right dose, you're actually not only exfoliating, but you also contribute into that um, hydration and moisture of the skin. So that's my very favorite way to exfoliate. Once a week is plenty. Um, so uh, again, I, I see in the beauty industry, there are so many products that are you know, designed for daily use. Um, that are exfoliating, like exfoliating toners, exfoliating washes, even serums with a lot of exfoliating agents. And that's that's how you, that's the fa fast track to um, sensitized skin. So once a week is plenty. Um, your skin cannot even make dead skin that fast. You know, our skin turns over in about a month. So every 28 days, we have new cells that die and come up to the surface. So literally, if you just exfoliate once a month, you're good. You've gotten rid of those cells. And so when we say let's exfoliate once a week, that's already a little bit more than what your skin is doing. So it's plenty. Once you get to daily exfoliation, that's just calling for trouble. Um, and of course, this changes. When I say 28 days, we, that process slows down with age. So maybe somebody that's in their 20s. They still have that 28 day cycle. You get into your 30s, maybe it's you know a little bit longer, 40s, 50s, maybe it'll take you 50 days. Um, and so you know, that kind of maintaining that exfoliation schedule about once a week really, you know, can help everybody across the board. 
Um, and then next, this is just crucial. I would not be, you know, uh, explaining the beauty doctrine method if I didn't incorporate supplements and red light. And those are the very basics. So collagen, grass-fed liver, and the reason it's grass-fed liver, liver is the most nutritious a food on the planet. And that's a great source of vitamin A. So if you start incorporating this, and it doesn't even have to be daily in your diet, even if it's like once a week or twice a week, that's phenomenal. Um, and so if you do this consistently, you won't need powerful retinoids, tretinoin, all these types of things. And red lights we've already talked about, that's just crucial to maintaining skin health and that mitochondrial function. Big misconceptions. Um, so I mentioned this one, it's if it's good enough to eat, it's good enough to put on your skin, completely wrong. Uh, natural is safe. And so this is, I, I still find with many of my clients, they have a hard time with this. They think, well, it's natural. <laughs> uh, well, you know, a lot of poison is natural. Poison ivy is natural. Um, lemon. So the biggest example I give and the easiest one is just lemon. Lemon can be like when you look at all the claims that a lot of brands can make. So you can put lemon in a formulation. It can be organic. It could be paraben free. It could be fragrance free. So lemon meets all that criteria, right? Everything, all these like buzzwords that we keep hearing, you know, it could be organic, like USDA, uh, you know, organic certified. You can get every certification on the planet. There is not a certification that tells you that lemon is completely destructive for the skin. And so that's something that I'm really trying to, you know, educate on and kind of spread the word about it because it's everywhere. Uh, lemon can be detrimental to your skin. You can be a trigger for hyperpigmentation. It breaks down that lipid barrier, basically eats away at it, all that acidity. It breaks it down. Once there are those gaps in your lipid barrier, and that's really easy to do, the skin is vulnerable. You're more prone to sensitivity, reactivity, redness, all types of issues. You become reactive to pretty much everything. Korean beauty is better? No. <laughs> Korean beauty is just really good at marketing. There are millions or billions of dollars that are invested in the marketing of this specific type of beauty. Uh, and it, it's really driven. And I'm sure if you're into K-beauty, you probably know uh, the whole 10-step routine, the 20-step routine. And what that does, the reason you see that instant gratification with it is because there's so much water and so much hyaluronic acid, a lot of humectants. So you see that you know smoothness in the skin, that hydration, but what's happening behind the scenes is when you're applying 10 to 20, you know, just water-based uh, you know, products, remember water requires preservatives. And so you're layering all these preservatives. So it's not just the, whatever key ingredient in there, when you flip the, the bottle and read the ingredient list, each of those bottles is probably, you know, at least 50 ingredients. That's what I've found. Um, and so can you imagine hundreds of ingredients that are being piled onto the skin and all types of preservatives? That is recipe for disaster. So down the road, you, you're, you're on your way to developing some type of sensitivity. That's just not necessary at all. Um, and then clean beauty is fear mongering. So this is a statement I see from like traditional mainstream beauty. Obviously, you know, if there is a lot of awareness that's happening with clean, then there's always the opposite side. There is always that the beauty brands that are creating products that are so cheap because, you know, you don't need to do any of the testing. You don't need to be picky about your, your, um, sourcing or any of that you can just you know stuff a jar with a lot of synthetics and put beautiful scent in it and have a great design and then sell it for hundreds of dollars so there is that resistance and um kind of you know uh spreading this idea that clean beauty just uh, is fear-mongering that is not true i'm actually really happy to see that there is a lot of awareness around ingredients so once you know you can't end now um, so cosmetics and supplements are tested for safety. A lot of people think this, you know, there's no regulation really, um, you know, a supplement, you can literally put salt in a capsule and call it, you know, berberine or call it anything you want and sell it on the market. There is hardly any oversight. So that's, that's, um, a big issue that we have here in the U S. Um, if a product worked for my friend, it will work for me. No, we're all individuals. So it's really important to figure out what's right for your skin type. Um, you know, our hormones have a lot to do with how our skin behaves and how it reacts to certain products. So just keep these misconceptions in the back of your mind as you navigate the world of um, skincare.
All right, so let's get into ingredients. Um, so I have, if, when you go to thebeautydoctrine.com, uh, just find the resources, you'll see that section. Uh, there is a, a document that I uploaded on there that can help you look for, you know, the best ingredients, right? So I, you know, categorized it into three categories. So, and these are just, it's not comprehensive by any means, but the key, the top ones, the top ingredients that you can find in most formulations. So the first category is carcinogens. Um, there's hormonal disruptors and then there are irritants. So if you can print that and use it as a guide to vet, you know, products that you are, um, you know, that you're, you're uh, considering purchasing. Um, so why clean matters? So there's uh, actually in, in the EU uh, specifically, of course, Japan and Australia, they're generally on the same page with Europe. Uh, there are over 1,500 ingredients that are either banned or restricted. And I mean, by contrast, in the U.S., there are only 11 banned ingredients. So that's just, that's huge. And that's where, you know, um, I give a lot of credit to Credo, for example. You know, they led the charge with this piece is really distinguishing, kind of looking at those 1,500 ingredients, making sure that whatever products they have, you know, on their shelves do not have those ingredients. Uh, but again, the one lack is the fa is just the focus on kind of the absence of the toxic ingredients and no focus at all on compatibility. And that's what I'm, I'm really trying to, to do here um, at the Beauty Doctrine. Um, safety concerns, obviously, uh, in the U.S., there is this tendency, and I see this with a lot of my clients, they're like, well, I want something more powerful. I want something stronger. It's just the mindset. You know, we always want things that look super powerful. And so that's why people lean towards retinoids a lot. I believe if you're in your 20s, 30s, I see people using retinoids since they're teenagers. Of course, you get your first pimple and then you, you get a prescription for acne versus just looking at like all those really simple things that can cause acne in the first place. So we, we tend to suppress and we tend to dry things out and like really attack, I call it, you know, attack the skin uh, to get rid of whatever manifestation is versus um, work on the, that root cause. Um, so actually, I'm glad to see in Europe right now, actually, there is a now um, regulation on the concentration of certain retinol. So a lot of the products that are just over the counter here. Um, they're no longer sold um you know, uh, in, in the EU because of those, those high um, percentages. Hydroquinone is another one. I think of it as Clorox. It's like a bleach. And so if you express any uh, concern with hyperpigmentation, the first product that comes to mind that's prescribed is hydroquinone. And we're still here in the US. It's available on the shelves. It's been banned in all of those countries that I, that I mentioned. And so that actually is a skin lightener um, yes, it's going to give you the fastest result because it's just bleaching the, the surface of the skin. So you see less of the pigmentation, but pigmentation is actually rooted really deep in the skin. So with your cellular turnover, you're, it's going to keep coming up. So it's just a lost battle. And of course, with hydroquinone, it's, it's toxic to our bodies. It also can cause much darker pigmentation down the road. So a lot of people that use it six months and up, they can actually experience, you know, uh, even darker and angrier spots later on in life. Um, and then long-term health impact, obviously, you know, clean beauty is important because at least, I mean, nothing is perfect, but at least it considers a lot of these ingredients that I was mentioning, the carcinogens and hormone disruptors. So the more aware you are of those ingredients, the better off. And of course, awareness. So there is this big movement of creating awareness around ingredients, which I think just benefits everybody. Knowledge is always power. All right, so uh, in order, let's um, kind of talk about the barrier layer. So for me, that's always the first um, place to look is strengthening your barrier layer. So if you still have your favorite moisturizer or you're like, you know what, I still love my exfoliation or, you know, uh, this product has a fragrance and I, I can't do without it or, you know, you're still using things that are abrasive strengthen that barrier. I cannot emphasize it enough. Uh, because again, the minute that it's starting to weaken, that's when pathogens come in. So you'll suffer a lot more when there there's change, uh, you know, seasonal changes, there's more pollen, there's, you know, so your skin just becomes reactive to so many things. And so you want to give it those ceramides. So again, ceramides are those fats that really are the, the wall um, that builds that lipid barrier. 
so jojoba is a great one. That's the key ingredient in berry or pear serum. There's also rosehip oil, which is phenomenal. That's natural retinol. Uh, that's really, really gentle. Uh, and of course, it has hemp seed. Hemp seed has a lot of amino acids. It's really just one of two plants on the planet that has amino acids in it. So that's, you know, similar to peptides, natural peptides that will help maintain that, you know, um, strength and suppleness of the skin. So if you were to not make any change in your skincare routine, at least incorporate something such as barrier repair serum, and you'll start seeing that strengthening of the skin as you go along. So now age reverse with supplements. Uh, supplements can be, it's, <laughs> you can be amazed uh, to, to navigate in the beauty industry, especially with lack of, navig of um, regulation and, and oversight. Um, but like the really basic ones that I would say to make sure that you're incorporating, if you want to really firm up that skin, trigger that collagen production, uh, and maintain the suppleness of the skin, that elastin, hardly anybody talks about elastin. That's also a really important component of the skin. Um, so good collagen that's wild caught marine. That would be the best one. Bone broth is essential. That I think of it as that internal lubricant, you know, when you hear like your joints and everything, they're cracking, that means you don't have enough collagen. So bone broth and, you know, marine collagen can actually help, you know, lubricate all of your joints. You know, collagen is the most abundant protein in our body. It's not in our ligaments, tissues, eyes, it's everywhere. And so that's what it's like the glue that holds us together. And of course, we dry up as we age. And so when you have adequate collagen production that can actually keep your body supple, lubricated and off, obviously your skin stays nice and supple as well. Uh, it diminishes, you know, collagen declines about 1% every year, starting our twenties. And then it just speeds up that decline speeds up, you know, especially for women at menopause, you lose about 30% collagen once you are in full menopause. So that's a huge number. Uh, but there are so many ways that we can regenerate it. So that's the beautiful thing about the hu human body is that, you know, it's, we're always renewing, you know, so if you change, you know, even one or two habits, you can start experiencing concrete results. Um, adaptogens are huge. I'm so happy that there is a lot of, you know, kind of focus on adaptogens in the last few years. Uh, herbs can be, can have a huge impact on our uh, bodies. So adaptogens are basically herbs that help your body adapt to stress. And stress is one of the top contributors to aging. So ginseng is phenomenal. Ashwagandha is another like really great adaptogen. There are a lot of adaptogenic mushrooms as well. I have a great selection on my website. So all of my favorites, I, I was able to add on there. Omega-3 fatty acids tend to get forgotten. Um, I think of them as the internal moisturizer. So uh, I am a huge fan of like two types of fish. That's all I really consume is wild caught salmon as well as sardines. Um, and so because a lot of other fish has a lot of issues, you know, with, uh, you know, um, farmed fish and all that. Uh, and then of course, mercury and, you know, we can go down this rabbit hole, but like just to keep it really limited to, you know, the positive recommendations, uh, it's really wild caught fish and, um, you know, sardines and of course, omega-3 supplements, you know, if you not want to consume fish at least, at least three, four times a week then just ensure that omega a good high quality omega-3 is um part of your um your daily intake uh, obviously avocados olive oil there's like a long list of really great things i have um, a few courses that detail this there's a course just about proteins for the skin there's a course about uh you know nutrition you know just skin nutrition there's a course that's comprehensive that goes in depth about everything that i talk about like if you take that course that's literally Everything I know, everything I've learned in the last 28 years, it was just kind of dumped into that. So that is the skincare mastery course. Uh, so you get to learn all of this and, you know, much, much more, obviously. And then something green. I, the reason I just said something green, you guys, green uh, or greens in general, those are our detoxifiers. And so a lot of them can help carry those toxins out of the body. And so for me, I, you know, I'm really busy. I don't have time to cook, but I always every day if you look into my fridge there is arugula so arugula this you know it's pre-washed it's organic so i don't leave myself room 
uh, to make excuses. Okay, I, I can't eat well. Well, I can just open the fridge and just dump that arugula onto a plate and put maybe shredded carrots or something. And there's my lunch, you know, for you know, and open a can of sardines. I can have a lunch in five minutes. So there are ways that you can incorporate greens easily into your life. Um, one green that I will mention specifically is moringa. This is something everybody should be consuming. Uh, moringa is nature's multivitamin. It is a comprehensive multivitamin that has your minerals, your vitamins, you know, just a little bit every day, you know, and year. It can help you towards that detoxification and giving your body a lot of the minerals and nutrients that it needs. Uh, and obviously there are so many other, um, you know, amazing greens that can really help with the detoxification and just overall health. Uh, but, you know, uh, Moringa was worth a mention. How to age reverse with lifestyle. And so nothing that I've mentioned so far can really get you to your goals without these very, you know, at least being aware of this, right? So sometimes it's really difficult to make a lot of changes at once, but that additional awareness can make a big difference. So just being aware of our environments at home, there is outdoor pollution, there's also indoor pollution. So sometimes just having an air purifier or some plants around, you know, plants can actually circle, you know, circulate the oxygen, give you good, clean oxygen in your home. Um, obviously optimizing sleep. I am creating a lot of content around that. Um, so now I have a YouTube channel where I, you know, I'll be speaking, you know, I'm just waiting for some, some uh, videos to actually be edited and they're going to go up on sleep because from my personal experience and I try to do everything right, you know, as far as, you know, incorporate exercise and food and good skincare, but sleep is one of those things I struggle with and I see it. It's so concrete. It's like day and night. If you don't sleep well, your skin just will age rapidly. Uh, so that's something that's always, always some, you know, um, on my mind that I'm researching and trying to optimize. And obviously any of my findings, I will share with all of you, you know, via either, you know, my courses or all of my content on social media. Um, exercise we talked about earlier, and that's really, you know, has endless benefits, but one of them, you know, re relative to the skin, it's that detoxification you want to sweat. But also, uh, we, you know, we tend to think very superficially about, you know, skin aging. Um, we think about the skin alone, you know, and, you know, in this presentation, I've talked a lot about collagen, but there are all these other structures under the skin. You know, there's the fascia that we need to take care of, but also the muscle. And so the more muscle we have in our body, including our face, the more taut the skin is going to look. It's that foundation that the skin sits on. And so you want to maintain your muscle mass. It's super important. Um, sauna, I put it next to exercise because it helps you sweat. And so that it's a, a huge detoxifier. There was actually a study that came out. It's a 21 year study that came out last year that kind of showed or, you know, uh, surmised that sauna can reduce all cause mortality by 60%. That's just insane. <laughs> and so a lot of these diseases and issues that people tend to, you know, develop as, as we age, uh, sauna can actually help us with. Um, and that just kind of, you know, highlights how, you know, detoxification and sweating, how important they are to our well-being. And then, of course, aging well and stress management that goes along with it. And of course, if you have a stressful lifestyle like like I do, uh, adaptogens become really important. And then, of course, managing that sleep and um, exercising. Everything is correlated, really, to help you get to that great skin. Uh, so this is just a plug for my um, kind of social media channels where I'm hanging out these days. So I've been on TikTok now for a few years, uh, but I'm kind of transitioning uh, more to YouTube because I get a lot of demand for like in-depth explanations and such. Um, and so I've been focused on YouTube. So if you're not subscribed, please do so. And if you ever need to reach me on social media, Instagram would be the very best place. That's where I tend to, you know, um, check my DMs. It's not as overwhelming as TikTok. On TikTok, I get hundreds of DMs every day. So it's, it's, very, it's very overwhelming. I don't even look at it. I just post and close the app. But um, if you want to reach me on DM, Instagram is where I still get like a decent manageable amount of, um, you know, DMs and I'm able to converse. Uh, so this is just, you know, a couple of reviews from some of my very dear clients that I've worked with, um, you know, just their feedback from 
to some of the consultations there. I won't read them. I won't bore you with them, but just wanted to like flash that. <laughs> All right. So how, you know, can we move forward? How can you benefit from my expertise, basically? So I created a few offers. Um, like I said earlier, this is the very first webinar. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm going to be do, hosting the exact same one tomorrow at 2 p.m. So if you have a friend that hasn't been able to make it to this one, definitely, you know, get them on tomorrow's. Um, and I'm going to try and have a webinar, you know, each week about a different topic. Um, and then, you know, just to thank you for your time that you're spending with me here, you know, I, I will have different offers um, you know, that you can take advantage of just at the time of the webinar or like 24 hours after, because we have, there's a Thursday and Friday. So these will be active until the end of the day, Friday. Um, so there is a, a discount code, like all of my friends on TikTok, they know it. It's clean 10. Um, anytime you go on my website, uh, obviously I've taken the last three years to curate the cleanest possible collection of products. Uh, while waiting for to find that like perfect manufacturer and chemist for my own brand that's taken forever. And I will not launch anything unless it's perfect. But until then, there is a great curation of products that I vetted that are free of all of not only the toxins, but also ingredients that can irritate and compromise your lipid barrier. So you know, take a screenshot of this. Uh, Clean 10 is really, it's pretty much active all the time. Um, but we have a couple, you know, I created 50% off for you for either booking a consultation one-on-one -on -one with me on Zoom or uh, any of my courses. It's called TBD University. So there are a bunch of different courses under, um, you know, this umbrella on my website. So you can just use the discount code functional beauty and that'll get you 50% off. Uh, and very recently, I created these bundles uh, to make it easy for my clients. So not everybody, obviously, you know, can, um, you know, book a consultation. My time is very, very limited. Uh, I, I can't see everybody. That's why I'm trying to figure out all these little ways that I can provide value to everyone where you can just help yourself. You can just go to my website and find these resources. So it's packed with all different, you know, resources. Um, and one of them is bundles. And so um, I very often get these questions. I have this issue, what's the best cleanser? Or this issue, what's the best you know, moisturizer or serum or sunscreen? And so I created, I think about five bundles. This is very new, just um, about a week or two ago. And so uh, there's the mature, you know, mature is you know, 40 plus basically. So this bundle that's on the screen is, it's got progesterone while DM cream. Um, it's got estro skin support. So that's gonna help, you know, provide in, kind of increase and optimize that estrogen in the skin, which is like, once we lose it, we start losing that collagen as well, you know, in a, at a rapid rate. Um, you know, so you have your basics, you have the um, retinoid by Bloom Effects. So the very basics, I use pretty much everything that's in this picture and a couple more things, but um, you, you get the point. There are a few different bundles. There's one for sensitive skin, for acneic skin and so on and so forth. So, you know, check those out. And your discount code for that one is bundle. It's already discounted. Every single bundle has some type of um, value already just by putting those products together. But there is an additional one. And that's uh, the when you use code bundle, it takes an additional 10% off of that. So I'm working on a ton of other webinars. So each week, there'll be a different topic. Uh, so obviously this week's topic is reversing wrinkles. There's going to be, you know, hyperpigmentation, adaptogens, even, you know, how to build a beauty business. That one will take a little bit longer. Uh, so that'll come probably in two or three months, but um, there are a lot of topics that I'm working on. So just make sure that you're subscribed. All of everybody that's in my community receives, you know, one or two emails a week with all of the updates, you know, you know, what's going on. So they'll get notifications you know, for these new webinars, as well as any types of discounts, announcements, all of that, all the special stuff. <laughs> and this is it for the webinar. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next webinar. You take care. <music>